Really quickly, I gotta give a shout out to my sponsor, SeatGeek. If you guys are planning on going to any games or events this year, just use the app SeatGeek. I know I'm trying to go to a few NFL games this year, so I'm definitely using it. SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web in a single place, making the whole buying experience simple. They rate these deals on a scale of one to 100, with the higher the number, the better the deal. And if you use my promo code KTO, you will get $20 off your first purchase. So I'm gonna drop the link in the description. Honestly, you might as well just get the app just in case. You don't wanna lose out on cheap tickets. Madden, a game most you have played, has featured many iconic players on the cover. This list includes record breakers, Super Bowl winners, and Hall of Famers. Then it includes this guy, a guy who played at a dying position on a team that has been dead for a long time. The winner is Peyton Hillis. Yeah! In 2006, in a division with LSU, Alabama, and Auburn, Arkansas didn't seem to stand a chance. With a record below 500 in 2005, they seemed like a far cry from winning the division. But when you have a guy as good as Darren McFadden in your backfield, anything is possible. Behind Kenny Irons. Boy, he hits that hole. He still holds up today as one of the best college running backs that I've ever watched. And alongside him, Felix Jones was as good of a complimentary back to him as you could get. Even with McFadden putting up the numbers he did, Jones filled the stat sheet up with relative dominance. And then you had the heart and soul of the backfield. A guy who did the dirty work for McFadden and Jones while putting in his fair share of points on the board. Flare pass out to the near side, wide open, Peyton Hillis, touchdown Razorback. In a dramatic season where Arkansas reached a ranking as high as number five, they went on to win the division and represent the SEC West in the conference championship. Even though they went on to lose that game, the unlikely regular season would make this team a nationwide story, and the hype for Jones and McFadden at the next level was a major talking point. But for Hillis, not so much. After a dominant 2007 season, Darren McFadden was hyped up as a franchise-altering player, and Felix Jones wasn't too far off, as they both were drafted in the first round of the 2008 NFL Draft. And as the draft went by, and selections became less and less talked about, in the seventh round, the Denver Broncos decided, why not? And they picked up fullback Peyton Hillis. This was a glorious moment for Arkansas football. They expect him to take the next step and get to the next level. As Mike Shanahan said, he has the it factor, the intangible. He is a great leader. And when the season ends and you're looking at the top quarterbacks in the league, they both expect the name Jay Cutler to be right there. Nope, they're not oh, going to run the ball. Got him. Oh, my God. Another man is open. And if he breaks the tackle, he could be gone. Daryl Jackson off to the races, and the Broncos are in the end zone again. Denver 20. After starting the season hot, Denver was very hopeful. But things quickly took a turn. And by the end, it had only gotten worse. The Broncos ended the season in very disappointing fashion, and legendary coach Mike Shanahan was fired. But they did show promise with their rookie class. With multiple injuries in the backfield, one unexpected rookie was thrown into the fire. Peyton Hillis played a stretch of five to six games as a fill-in running back. He admitted at one point that it definitely felt different playing pure running back instead of fullback. Yet, he did quite well. Color dropping the throw from under center. He steps, floats one for Hillis. Hillis makes the catch, and down the side by Hillis. Midfield, 45-40. Hillis caught from behind, and will be pulled out of bounds at the Miami 33. Cover, play fake, rolling to his right, floats one to the corner of the end zone, and Peyton Hillis is having the game of his life. Peyton Hillis, his seventh reception of the game from a yard out. This one goes for a Denver touchdown but he did end up tearing his hamstring. 
making him the fifth back on the team to be placed on injured reserve. And by the next season, his 15 minutes of fame seemed to be up. The Broncos used a first round pick on running back Noshawn Marino, who immediately became the full time back. Hillis would only get 13 carries all season. And after Jay Cutler left the year before, new head coach Josh McDaniels was in desperate need of a quarterback. Our top stories coming out of the NFL. Brady Quinn has been traded from the Cleveland Browns to the Denver Broncos today. In exchange, Denver gets uh, Peyton Hillis, a fullback, a six-round pick in 2011, and a conditional pick in 2012. Peyton Hillis was sent where NFL players' careers go to die. In 2010, the Browns did not improve. They actually were worse statistically. They ranked second to last in total offense, with three different starting quarterbacks all doing their fair share of the damage. This stacked up to yet another abysmal season. Except for Peyton Hillis. This Hillis is a, a runaway train. Uh, Browns going about their business on third and five for Peyton Hillis. A one handed catch! This is a touchdown to Cleveland! He's got great hands, and Hillis finds his way, unlocks the defense. Hillis off the left side, inside the five, and inside the pylon for a touchdown. The 240 pound monster terrorized opponents. A fair share of fans didn't even know who this guy was, and he had quickly become the most popular name on the team. I wonder how the Broncos felt about this. I can imagine their front office thinking, we traded this guy for a backup quarterback? Yeah, Brady Quinn never even played it down in Denver. I know it's been a while, but there was a week when the NFL spotlight surrounded Cleveland after one of the most shocking games in recent memory. Since this glorious day as a Browns fan, the Patriots have played in 125 games, regular season and playoffs. There was only one other time that they were beaten by at least 20 points. The Falcons almost had a chance to be on this list, but yeah, anyway. Peyton Hillis was the star of the game, racking up his best stat line of the entire season. He would end the season with over a thousand yards on the ground and double digit touchdowns, giving a little bit of life back to a desperate fan base. For Madden the following year, to choose who was on the cover, they did a March Madness style bracket, and it would be chosen by the fans. The championship round came down to Michael Vick and Peyton Hillis, two very different paths of getting to this point. Peyton Hillis was still in high school when Michael Vick was on the cover of Madden 04. You all know Hillis won, and he won by a landslide vote. This officially makes him the strangest cover athlete in the history of Madden. Looking into the next season, the Browns had something to build around. Peyton Hillis seemed like the perfect choice to represent the people of Cleveland. He was a hardworking, blue collar kind of guy and would do whatever it took to help his football team win. Or at least that's what we thought. He made it clear he was ready to get paid. Since he was making less than a million dollars a year and after what he did the season before, I don't blame him. But sometimes money brings the worst out in people. Early in the season, Hillis missed a game because of strep throat. What? For a guy as tough as Hillis apparently was, that was odd. And when the Browns had nobody and they were desperate for him to return, he would play very limited action on dealing with an apparent lingering hamstring problem. Rumors began swirling. It seemed pretty obvious that Hillis was protesting the Browns. But there was one ridiculous story that swirled saying that Hillis considered retiring from football to join the CIA. Yeah, that was a lie. Hillis wasn't happy about that rumor either. But it did become apparent to players in the locker room. Hillis was refusing to play. And offensive tackle Joe Thomas didn't hold back. Quote, it was a terrible distraction. He crippled our offense. We were struggling to find anybody who could carry the ball after all the injuries we had. To have Peyton going through a contract dispute and basically refusing to play, it was a big distraction. 
After the Browns did whatever it took to get Peyton Hillis, their new hero on the Madden cover, at the end of the season, they had refused to pay the man and didn't want anything to do with him. Hillis would never play for the Browns again. Things continued to take a massive turn. As fast as Hillis rose up, his career took a nosedive. He never came close to what he did in 2010, and after another three mediocre seasons, he was out of the league entirely. He did say after he was done that he had lost his desire to play the game. This could be due to the whole contract situation, who knows. But for how it went down, he will forever remain a mystery. And a massive one year wonder. Call it what you want, bizarre, odd, but no one will ever be able to take away what he did in 2010. When you're a Browns fan like me, you cherish the few great moments like giving a 240 pound fullback the ball and beating the Patriots by 20. Just imagine being a defender in a one-on-one -on -one situation. The last guy you'd want to tackle is Peyton Hillis. Hillis again, up the middle, 